Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's growth call for BISC for the week of July 18th. My name is Steve Jane. Hello to uh, Christoph here in the, in the Zoom room and uh, everybody else watching online or on YouTube. We have these growth calls every week at this time to discuss how the BISC network has been doing and to discuss current priorities for the project. Uh, for this call, if you're in the call, if you're in the Zoom room, feel free to post your comments in the Zoom chat or on Slack. I'll be watching both of them and I'll try to respond as I can. A link to this week's agenda is on GitHub in the growth repository for BISC. It's issue number 149. We have a few, few small things to cover. We'll do our market update as usual. Then we'll talk about the uh, release that uh, we had on Tuesday. And then we'll talk about the, uh, the current proposal for protection mechanisms, proposal number 93, progress we've made there, and uh, I guess pending items to, to discuss and debate there. Um, then we'll talk about the, the Dow voting outcome. The third voting cycle just ended a couple of days ago on, well, actually yesterday, and uh, it was a success. So we'll talk about what the outcome was there. And um, then at the very end, we'll talk about uh, translating BISC to Japanese. If anybody has any thoughts there, we saw some activity in the uh, Japanese yen market a couple of weeks ago. Um, there are a few offers pending there right now. Um, so, yeah, we we'll just talk about the um, if there's any desire or or um, um, yeah willingness to convert or to translate the uh, BISC software into Japanese. So for uh, I guess we can just jump right in for the market update. Uh, we've continued strength. Uh, we are at 1,059 Bitcoin in volume for the month so far, which very, very strong. We're probably not going to quite hit the, uh, the total volume for, that we had in June, in July, but we've already passed uh, total volume for the month of May. Um, and many other months. It's a very good month so far. We have a daily average Bitcoin volume of about 58, 59, 58.8 Bitcoin, uh, which is also very high uh, on 75 average trades per day. All very strong numbers. Um, driven by Monero for the most part. And uh, let's see. Yeah. Driven mostly by Monero, of course, uh, fiat trading is still somewhat constrained. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. We are hopefully close to releasing those constraints with the new account signing mechanism that we'll be releasing um, most probably with the next, hopefully with the next release. Um, speaking of releases, we had a minor release on Tuesday, 1.1.3, uh, which uh, Included a lot of bug fixes and improvements to make startup faster. Um, Christoph, do you want to go into a little bit more more detail about that release? Um, yeah, sure. Um, as you already mentioned, it's it was a, a bug fix and a network improvement release. So um, over the last couple of weeks, uh, there were lots of pull requests uh, and, and bugs fixed, and so it was really worth um, releasing a new version before the account signing. Um, on, on the one hand side, there were a couple of bug fixes on the DAO synchronization issue. Uh, so that should be better now or hopefully uh, fixed. Um, a couple of, I just want to, to mention a couple of bugs that uh, popped up that were um, fixed. Uh, if you had issues uh, with editing, especially small offers, uh, that should be covered. Uh, also, if you traded uh, C, uh, with SIPA instant, um, you probably ran into an issue that you were not able to transfer uh, any money to the trading peer because there was no account information displayed. Um, it was bad, that was fixed. So thanks um, um, for the developer fixing that. Um, also, um, we had some uh, in, uh, improvements on the peer-to-peer -peer network uh, by Florian. Um, we are now kind of bundling messages. Um, so, so that should reduce the the traffic in the P2P network and yeah, let's see. At the, at the moment, uh, it doesn't look like as everything crashed, so it's, it's behaving quite fine. Yeah, let's see if it improves uh, the network over, uh, when, when lots of people are updating. It, it should help um, 
get the load off the network. Uh, also, what we um, introduced um, uh, is a, a small cleanup tool uh, for safe trades that failed uh, uh, market price check. So if you had, um, if you accepted an offer and there was kind of an error message shown uh, that there was some price disagreement, um, uh, then you probably had some, some issues uh, in the client. Um, now we, we, we uh, published this cleanup tool. Um, so actually it's just a special version of the BIS client. You can install it, run it. It will um, sh display a short information, a dialogue that it cleaned all the trades and it shuts down immediately. So it's, it's, you, you can't do anything wrong. Um, after you have uh, uh, overwritten your existing BIS installation with this client, just install, uh, verify and install the, the old, uh, the current version again and yeah hopefully all the problems should be gone so yeah I think so there are uh, lots of other smaller um, bug fixes and improvements but that was the, the, the major major parts and as you already mentioned um, we are um, heading for releasing the account signing with the next release uh, with um, 1.2.0 yeah let's see um, when we will release it, hopefully uh, within our regular schedule between four to six weeks um, time, um, it will need some some in-depth uh, testing um, time when when we have it finished. Because yeah, it's it's really critical that we nail this feature that uh, we don't introduce any problems that either signing issues occur or that even worse uh, scammers are signed and they are. Uh, signing their scam accounts so that that uh, shouldn't happen but i'm quite positive that uh, we have a concept that works really well but yeah that that was for for the for the release awesome yeah so i guess we could just segue right into uh the account protection mechanisms that we're working on um as you mentioned it's um something we want to make sure we get right and you know it's it probably taken longer than most people have expected but um it's really for the for the good of the network if we rushed it out then people are you know there's a very strong chance that people will just get hit and lose money lose trust and it just would not be a good situation so we want to make sure we get it right um the proposal that we are working on implementing right now is proposal number 93 uh, for account signing um and i think i'm going to attempt to explain it um let me know if i'm missing anything but basically uh accounts accounts payment accounts that were created before march 1st are going to be signed by an arbitrator um under the assumption that they are honest and they're okay um accounts after uh payment accounts created after march 1st are going to be uh they're going to have to do a a trade with another signed account um once that account, once that trade has gone through successfully, the once the seller acknowledges that the payment was received successfully, uh, that acknowledgement will count as a sign, a signing of the payment account. And after 30 days, the restrictions on trading, the 0.01 Bitcoin restriction, will be lifted, and the original uh, account trading size rule will then apply. Uh, so if, you know, after 30 days, you can trade the 0.06 Bitcoin after 60 days, a higher amount and so on. I think it varies by payment account type. Um, and then after 60 days from that date, so after 90 days total, that uh, user can then sign other payment accounts themselves. Um, so I think right now, if I have it right, we are relying mainly on um, delay, like time delay after a successful trade. Um, what we're looking at doing after that, after this is in place and successful and working, is to add other verification methods. Um, could be through a second bank account, could be through other verification methods. Um, there's an issue for that in the proposals repository. Um, to um, to add, you know to act as additional verification methods in addition to delay time delay, um, so that's kind of and I guess we have um, Christoph posted some mockups earlier 
over the past couple of days on how this will actually look. Um, if you look at the proposal, uh, it's number 93 at the bottom, toward the bottom, there's a little bit of discussion on, um, on the UI, user experience, uh, the dialog boxes. Maybe just like a quick note on the, on the conditions. Uh, we might go even stricter than we thought. So you mentioned that um, all the accounts uh, that were created before uh, March 1st will be signed. Um, so there's the idea to make it, as we don't know if uh, the accounts before March 1st ever was traded, also were used in a, in a real trade, um, we will start um, by only signing accounts where there was a, a dispute mm. and the, the buyer uh, received the Bitcoin in the end. So if the buyer received the Bitcoin in a dispute, then we do know that there are two bank accounts uh, involved and they, there was real money uh, transferred, which was verified by the arbitrator. So, so um, if we even limit it to that, then we, have, uh, we are sure that we only sign accounts that were used in a real trade and there was no chargeback. Um, the only problem we might uh, run into if you release that uh, with that restriction that um, the initial number of, of people who got uh, accounts, as uh, people, payment accounts that got signed uh, might be a little bit low. But uh, if, if it's too low and it, it, start, it takes too long to, to spread out, uh, then we might I have to think about loosen up uh, this condition and and start signing um, maybe yeah a, a, any any account before March first. But um, as this is something that can be done um, will be done uh, at the moment by the arbitrators. Uh, we don't need an extra release. So if you see, yeah, we just um, have don't have enough uh, accounts to to kick this off in in our markets, then we can. Um, distribute special versions to the arbitrators and they they can uh, reassign uh, assign again um, all the other accounts as well but let's let's start just small first and then spread out so um, it, it sounds a little bit complicated maybe um, if you hear it for the first time but uh, for you as the user it's qu quite easy um, you don't have to do anything special to sign someone so you just trade as usual and um, uh, the, if the seller clicks on payment received, he will automatically sign the other trading peer. Uh, so, so we try to make to create a network, as a trusted network of, of of accounts. So, trusted accounts can sign other accounts. After some time, they get also trusted, or depending on the on the verification, it gets it immediately. Yeah, and so over time, we should have a really broad, secure network of trusted accounts and. Uh, we might can go down with all the, the limits and security measurements we had in place before, like limits and so on, just to prevent uh, um, the scammers getting into the platform. So uh, if, if that works out, that might open up some opportunities to, to make uh, BISC more, more easy to use because we don't have to enforce uh, lots of limits to the user. But let's see. Yeah, regarding that, um, uh, discussion that's going on on the account signing. Uh, maybe um, a couple of, um, I want just to talk about a couple of comments that were raised. So regarding signing options, um, as Steve already mentioned, uh, the first step is um, you just trade with a, um, a peer that uh, is a kind of a trusted payment account and can sign. Um, if, if your account gets signed, uh, nothing changed at the moment for you. After 30 days, uh, this initial limit of 0 0.01 Bitcoin is, is lifted. And yeah, you can trade uh, within the um, regular limits uh, that are in place. Uh, and after 90 days, you can sign other accounts as well. So if we introduce, uh, let's say, um, two bank account uh, um, a verification or a, um, yeah, kind of verification options, then we can think about uh, if you if you want to go down with or remove this this time delay completely. So and that that's up to us. Or if if we have kind of other certificates that sign payment accounts, uh, which are 100% trust or yeah, quite near near to 100% trusted, then we might also can just remove this uh, time delay completely. Um, 
if this kind of uh, signing options are introduced, uh, still, uh, for me personally, there is still the same state. So at the moment, uh, Steve, correct me if I am wrong, uh, we have th three states. So we have the state in a, or four states. Um, unsigned account is the first state. Um, an account was signed, uh, but is still um, uh, with has still a limit, this initial limit of 0 0.01 Bitcoin. Then we have account was signed and limit is lifted. And then we have account was signed and um, can uh, the account can also sign other accounts. So that's that, that are the states that um, we have the system. So if we have this uh, two bank accounts um, verification, and we say, yeah, uh, we think it's so hard for an, uh, an attacker to, to steal two accounts from the same person. Um, um, there will be no time delay. Then there will, then uh, the account, uh, the, the state account was signed, but still with limit uh, will be kind of skipped and it will go right to the account was signed and limit is lifted state. And then of course we have still, or well, that's up to this for, uh, for discussion. If we then still have the, the delay, um, uh, until an account can sign other accounts. But yeah, we, regarding the state, so maximum, we have this, uh, uh, this, this four states. Uh, but yeah, it can be that for some verification method, we only have one state or yeah, two, two states, so unsigned and then signed and sign up. Um, and we had this discussion uh, in, in the, in the, th as a, on, on this proposal regarding the icon. Um, what I wanted to communicate, uh, addition, so, we, so for, for those who are not aware, there, there might be another column in the, in the offer book um, for each offer where you can see, not only see this uh, P icon, so which, you, which you might know if you trade on, on BISC, but there is another column where it says time since signing. So if you haven't, if you haven't been signed, then yeah, there's nothing there to display. Uh, if you have been signed, two days ago, then it will say, yeah, two days. Um, and what I wanted to bring in there uh, with these icons is this information that uh, if the account just was signed, but uh, still is not kind of trusted, uh, so, so it's still within the limit. Um, so so we, we need this, this first state somehow to communicate, as so the account was signed, but still with limit. Um, with the second state, account was signed and limit is lifted. There was the idea with this just um, this dollar sign. Um, and then we have this third state, um, uh, which I wanted to the days is that it was signed and you can sign other accounts. Uh, why is that interesting to the user? Um, um, this, the state um, account was signed and can sign other accounts might be interesting uh, for everyone who is not signed yet. So probably um, um, account owners, uh, which uh, with, with uh, payment accounts they can sign, uh, will could create lots of uh, small uh, trades, 0 0.01 Bitcoin trades, um, with a kind of maybe above uh, the current market price, because yeah, it's interesting uh, for, uh, for people to get signed, so so there's an incentive for uh, account owners to to put out these trades, and and people who want to get signed and and get this uh, limit lifted can look for and filter for uh, these offers and and try to trade uh, with these peers, and then uh, their account will also be signed. So that's the, that's the um, information for for the unsigned accounts, and uh, for all the other uh, states. It's just kind of a risk information. Um, if I don't have any uh, display that there is, uh, that this account has been signed, uh, I can still have a look uh, uh, and on the peer info on the account age, if it's a really old account. Um, or if, if I see, okay, it was signed two days ago, uh, the account age is maybe 10 days ago, maybe I, I, I will take another um, payment as another offer if I want to be super super secure, but yeah, it's up to the user. The user can then uh, decide uh, what what kind of risk do they want to take. But yeah, so so the problem uh, I do have with the 
the, the clock uh, icon is that yeah it, it just represents um, the, the time um, but I wanted to get this information on this uh, um, yeah that's an account that can sign that's, that's an account that is kind of signed and trusted so, so it doesn't have the limit anymore so if we have um, yeah so I'm not, I'm not sure uh, how, how this can communicate it best with, with an icon. So if, if you're watching that, uh, or if you're in, in the call right now and you have a good idea um, what we could use, uh, just you don't have to, to make artwork, just, just write uh, a comment, uh, comment in, the, in the proposal, uh, what you think uh, would be, an, or just post some, some um, icons you found in the, in the web, what you think communicates it in, in a good way. And yeah, we, need, uh, we can have a look what's what's the best uh, icon to communicate the states and i think they should work for other payment methods as well as the states shouldn't change with additional verification methods um, there might be just less states for some some verification methods but yeah but that, that's just my opinion so far so it's it's all up uh, up for discussion um yeah and and the last uh, um so that's, I guess that's a, it's a longer discussion. And the last um, message, um, um, no, the last comment uh, you had, Steve, regarding the liability message. At the moment, I just added a small information on the uh, payment received a pop-up that, that, that as a seller, you're not only kind of uh, uh, releasing the Bitcoin, but you're also signing the other peer. Um, what was the idea, uh, Steve, regarding this liability message to, to make some social pressure or so that people not just press without thinking oh well, i was or, thinking uh, well i don't know it's just in my mind was that if you if you okay let me we'll go back to the message to see what it said um it said confirm that you received the payment additionally it just seemed to me that there might be a concern that if i acknowledge that i received the payment that's fine but if I sign the account, then am I attesting that this guy is innocent and honest forever? And if so, if he does something wrong down the line, am I going to be on the hook for that? I don't know if that's going to be a concern, but that's something that I think people might, mm -hmm. might, might ask or might wonder about. Okay. Yeah. It um, might, might make sense to make it clear. So yeah, of course, um, if, if you're signing lots of, uh, accounts and all the accounts you signed are scamming people, then the probability is quite high that you might, your, your account might get banned as well. So some ability, uh, if there's an issue, but yeah, if you trade with a peer, as Steve said, um, everything went fine, there was no chargeback, um, this peer starts to, I don't know, try to, to trick or scam people. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. We there's no uh, no guilt on on your side uh, that you signed this this other payment account on, in the first place. So we will be able to trace uh, lineage, though, right? I mean, if if one user starts to spam people, then we it's, can it's trace. A, it's a tree. Yeah, it, it's a it's a tree. Yeah. Um, what uh, we are in in discussion, we, we might or we surely not implement it, but might prepare it. Uh, I was talking with SQ. He had, um, he had the idea of that uh, an account can get signed multiple times. It makes it more, more complicated to, to implement. It's, it's, but um, if we just have the opportunity from a data structure perspective, um, because we, we can't change so much stuff. So if it's out, uh, we, we can't uh, change anything in the account, uh, in the witness store. Um, but if we kind of prepare that there might be more uh, um, signatures possible for one account, uh, then we could do it in a way that, so if, if we found, find a rotten egg, um, we just delete, also invalidate all, all signatures that, that were uh, from, from this uh, um, scam account. And still, if, if, the other, if, if one of the child, uh, child accounts um, traded with another peer and is an honest uh, account and got got also signed by let's say two other peers then it's still fine 
just uh, lost one one sign uh, one signature and so so that that could be um, something for the future if you if you want to implement some kind of automatic functionality that just wipes out all signatures um, downwards from a, from an untrusted account but yeah we, we try to be prepared for that to implement at the moment it will it will be a, a account by account um, banning okay just just um, um, to make it to get it out uh, quicker interesting um, idea okay yeah so that's that um, yeah just just in general as we were, were quite so I personally was quite silent uh, on, on this feature over the last couple of weeks uh, I just had personal um, time constraints so I will try to to post um, now more frequently updates so if you're interested um, I want to give feedback on this story just join us in, on the proposal and uh, give feedback and yeah the more uh, feedback we get, the better the first version of the account signing will be. Um, yeah, I think that's that's uh, that are the points at least uh, from my side. Uh, ahead. Okay, if I, I guess since uh, we had a, it looks like we have a couple of people join the call. Uh, one new face, Garland, Garland, welcome, Garland, Eminem, Huey. Um, so far, we've covered the market update and the release that we had on Tuesday, and we just got finished. Uh, talking about the protection mechanisms that we're working on. Um, we're still, we have the two items left are DAO voting, the outcome of the latest cycle, and translations. Um, if you have anything that you want to discuss, feel free to post it, or, or maybe just speak up now, or if you want to just post it in the chat, uh, feel free and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll cover. Um, okay, anything uh, else we want to talk about for protection mechanisms? Um, not from my side. Yeah. So, okay. just just maybe one thing. Uh, we are also um, are in discussion if there's a way to to do this without arbitrators at all. But it's kind of tricky because it it will always run into if you if you don't have this trusted starting point. Uh, yeah. Then we we have an untrusted setup and that can work and can fail depending how it is communicated. So for example, if we, um, we so yeah, um, maybe one thing, uh, because that's um, different um, than it is right now. Right now, uh, we applied uh, this, this uh, initial um, tol tolerated small uh, trading limit of 0 0.01 Bitcoin, uh, for example, for all SEPA trades, no matter if it's uh, Euro, US dollar, Yen, uh, um, whatever uh, currency, where we don't have a market yet. Uh, to make it easier um, to bootstrap market, is that when we do release this feature, um, the account signing will only be in mature markets, so in our major markets, um, where we do have enough uh, dispute cases to kick, to kick off this account signing. For all our markets that are kind of just slowly growing, uh, we're thinking about removing this limit completely. Uh, and don't have any account signing uh, and, um, right now because yeah, if there's no liquidity, there's there's really small chance that it's interesting for scammers anyway. Anyways, and um, we can um, start signing, still signing uh, accounts in the background uh, based on dispute cases we have, and we can always then decide um, if a market is uh, big enough or um, if we have just enough. Uh, trusted uh, accounts that we uh, apply this limit to make it kind of safer. But yeah, so that, that's one thing that um, will change that we, not, uh, we don't apply the, uh, this limit on, on uh, payment method completely and all, over all currencies, but payment method and specific currencies. So that's kind of loosened up a little bit. Yeah, it took us it took us three years to get to the stage of having issues with the established markets. So I think with newer markets just starting out, I think we probably have a little bit of leeway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and it's and it will be um, it will be easy to yeah to if we, if we see that there's an issue with one market, we can just uh, activate it and yeah save again. Cool. All right. 
Next topic, DAO voting. Uh, cycle number three ended on yesterday, 17th. We had a successful round. Uh, let me get the numbers. We had 21 proposals. Uh, I think most of them, I think all of them except for four were compensation requests. Um, the other four were proposals to adjust fees, to raise trading fees. Uh, we had a total of 302 votes on, uh, on those 21 proposals. Issued just over 22,000, 22,730 BSQ. The contrib contributors for their contributions and fees were raised. So I think uh, the market for BSQ started out pretty strong and uh, it's just, uh, I guess the stakeholders voted to increase fees to start bringing the, uh, the balance of BSQ issued and BSQ burned more into line. And so this was the first, first step toward that. New cycle started, cycle number four started now. And uh, yeah, we'll see the hope, hopefully see a new successful cycle over the next uh, three, four weeks. Anything, uh, any comments or anything to add there? I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, Just one comment. Yeah. I'm so happy that I'm not compensation maintainer anymore. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Although actually I have to ask you, uh, do we want to have, someone in charge of the repository just to close out the um that's oh. true so there's that and then yeah. there's also a um pull request i put out for updating the uh issue template for compensation requests because i think there was like a the old one had a bsq address but we don't need that anymore so i removed it mm -hmm. but it just needs to be merged i don't know who's in charge of that um yeah i, I can merge oh, okay I, I still have as, as I'm now have also the, the GitHub admin rights, I can assign someone. Yeah, so if, if someone is interested um, running this compensation um, maintainer role, it's, it's, it's now not so much a high risk role anymore because yeah, all the voting, all the critical stuff uh, takes place um, in, the, in the client, but still, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's an important role. Uh, at least, yeah, it's not only, you, you, if you're a compensation maintainer, uh, you could, could theoretically uh, also alter existing issues, but yeah, there's an history, it's the history which, uh, which proves if you change some stuff. So it's, it's yeah, it, it's a one-time thing you might, uh, <laughs> someone can do. So yeah, we can put up some BSQ bond if it's necessary, but yeah, I think it's, it, it's something that um, uh, can be, it's open for taking, to be taken. Also maybe, uh, one thing, I, I don't know if, if it's just me, uh, which might be interesting that someone is in uh, compensation repository also updates uh, the, the calendar when voting is happening or when the uh, uh, vote reveal phase is. So I, I personally do get, all, I do get this uh, in, uh, notifications always in the calendar if it's time to kind of start the best client, if it's not running, uh, to do the water wheel. Otherwise, you have you always have to remember it. Yeah, it it might be something that's yeah worth to continue. Uh, I did it for the first cycle. I don't know. I don't know if someone else took over or if it's still just roughly uh, working because it I, do, I did it repeatedly. So it's it's not exactly, but it's probably good enough. It yeah, just, it's, it's, it, uh, it, just, it just gets adjusted a little bit every now and then, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a little bit. So I just got a notification a few minutes ago that the vote result phase started. Um, so it's a little bit, I guess, a little bit off for, yeah. for this phase. But yeah, I think that'd be great to have for folks uh, not keeping BISC on all the time. Uh, yeah, so that's a role, I guess. If you um, uh, if you are wondering what you can do for BISC, I guess this is a role that doesn't really require programming or any kind of specific domain knowledge. Uh, just keeping the compensation directory clean or compensation repository clean and up to date. Um, of course, it'd be helpful to understand what is going on, like how this process actually works, but 
Um, if you just watch one cycle, you'll probably um, understand very quickly what's going on and how it works. So if you're looking to get involved with BISC in a somewhat um, minor or I guess uh, intuitive role to start out with, this could be a good thing to do. So uh, I guess get in touch uh, on Slack or uh, uh, even on a call like this and uh, we'll help you get started. And uh, I guess the last item is translations. Um, I guess two items here actually. One, I want to first mention that uh, big thanks to Huey for uh, for the translating the website to Portuguese. That was a really great big step. I think that's going to set the uh, set the stage for other languages, hopefully many other languages, for the website to be translated into. Um, we had a couple of issues. Uh, I think there might be a slight issue with, uh, with caching that's causing some of the images to uh, to not show in the selected language. And then there's an issue I overlooked is the responsiveness of, of the actual button to pick the language does not show on, on mobile. And on desktops of a certain width, I think close to the break point of like 90, 990, uh, 990 pixels, the, the menu gets a little wonky. Um, so it's a small issue, I think, uh, I think I know what to do to fix it. So I'll probably push a fix to that soon. Um, but yeah, largely, I think it looks great. I think it works great. So, uh, yeah, big thanks to Huey for that. Uh, other item is, I just wanted to open up a discussion on translating the BISC software to, to Japanese. So this was uh, a suggestion raised by our translation admin, Yevgeny. Um, I guess seeing that there was a couple of a uh, couple of offers, some recent activity in the Japanese yen market, and uh, just open question as to whether it would be beneficial to do that translation. Uh, I'm not sure, not too familiar with Japan and, and the culture there. If if English is just fine, or if uh, people would prefer uh, a translation to Japanese. So if anyone has any comments or thoughts there, we'd we'd love to hear them. Yep, and uh, that's all I have on the agenda for today. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to cover? Questions, comments? Not, nothing from my side, yeah. So regarding the Japanese translation, um, just also to put it in perspective, yeah, of course, uh, every translation will cost uh, money, also uh, BSQ in the end. So we have to think about, yeah, if it's, if it's worth, also, if Kenny is guess uh, guesstimating might be as so a translation and reviewing might be so in the range uh, of 1500 BSQ because it, everything gets translated and there's of course uh, costs cost over time when we add new features and uh, translation is maintained so we yeah we just need uh, uh, if, if people uh, in Japan are super fine uh, having English, uh, just English clients, or if it's if it's critical for adoption to have it translated. I think the modern Japanese is left to right, so that that makes it easier, at least from the UI part. As we have some some issues uh, with the right to left, um, um, so if if languages are written right to left, uh, some of the components uh, don't render perfectly. Uh, so that we still have this problem, but I think uh, the modern Japanese is left to right, so that shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, it's in the end we just need to know if it's if it's necessary. If it's uh, if it's also not ne not necessary to translate in Japan, yeah, of course we don't translate it. But yeah, yeah, it's a very good point about cost. Everything has a cost, even though it may not be obvious or tangible to everybody. Uh, it's certainly something we need to keep in mind. All right, I guess uh, I'll just wait a few more moments for any, any lingering questions or comments on here or on Slack. Cool, all right, well, um, if anybody has any comments or feedback on the proposal for protection mechanisms, please check out issue number 93. Love your feedback, um, as well as the Japanese translation. And yeah, thank you everybody for joining. And we'll see you again next week. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye.